Hi everyone, I'm Callum. I'm one of the Black Rhino Keepers here at Chester Zoo. We're here today with Gabe, our five-year-old male Eastern Black Rhino. And we're just going to be telling you a little bit of information about them, a bit about conservation and how we can help them out in the wild. So here at Chester Zoo, we have eight Eastern Black Rhino with with an age range between four months to 23 years. They're a critically endangered species with a lifespan of about 35 plus years in captivity or 30 years out in the wild. Now, Gabe's a strong looking animal. They can reach speeds of up to around 37 miles per hour. So you don't want to get in the way of a black rhino once they come charging towards you. As you can see on his head, he's got two horns. So we have the front horn, which is the anterior horn. This can reach lengths of up to 50 centimeters, possibly more. And then the smaller horn at the back is called the posterior horn. This one doesn't grow as long. When it rains, they will scratch their horn just to shave it down a little bit into whatever shape <laughs> they want to sharpen it up for fighting out in the wild. Gabe! The horns on their head are made of keratin. So this is the same sort of thing as what our fingernails are made out of, our hair. And then one of the main threats for the black rhino is poaching. So out in the wild, they are unfortunately shot and they will take the horn off the rhino because they believe that it has some um, like medical purposes, which to be honest, I'm not sure it does, but hopefully we can raise awareness and then help save these animals out in the wild. Now, Gabe's still searching around for his breakfast. <laughs> Not long been breakfast time here at the zoo. So all the rhinos that are housed here at Chester, as well as in other zoos in Europe, are all part of what we call a stud book. So we can't just breed any rhinos as and when we want to. This is all managed across Europe, there's currently about 70 black rhinos in zoos. This is about a tenth of the world's population. So there's around 700 approximately left altogether, which is a very low number. So any breeding that we can do in captivity for hopeful future release is excellent. So back in 2019, there was five rhinos selected from zoos across Europe to be released back into the wild out in Rwanda. So for these rhinos, it was a lot of work to get them back out into the wild. So a lot of keeper effort went in to crate training them. So this was their first stage. So they had to be trained to go into a crate. Once this was complete, it was then time for the rhinos to move on to a zoo out in Europe where they all congregated together. From this zoo, they then were taken to the airport and they were put on airplanes and then they were flown out to Africa. Once out in Africa, they were housed in what we call a boma. So this is like a soft release area. So as the days progress on, the human contact had become less and less ready for softly releasing these animals back out into the wild. So in these boomers, they get the opportunity to search for different foods that are out in the African bush. So foods that's safe for them, they learn what's not safe for them. And then one day the gates would have been opened and the animals could come back at night whenever they wanted to. And then slowly, slowly, they'll just be left to go out into the wild and not have to return to the boomers. Hopefully this is something that can continue in years to come with more rhinos going out into the wild. So Gabe's future offspring 
could potentially be up for re-release, which would be really nice. As I said, for breeding, we can't just breed as and when we want to. So here at the zoo, four times a week, we collect fecal samples from all of our female rhinos. Doing this allows us to look at their estrus cycle so we can tell when the rhinos are gonna be cycling. And then if we miss a cycle for that next one, that's when we can plan to mix our male and female together. So our fecal samples go to the endocrinology lab here at the zoo for our endocrinologists or our poo scientists. And then after they've got a good few months worth of samples, they'll then tell us what the cycles are so then we can predict in the future. The zoo also funded a endocrinology lab out in Africa. So not only are they doing fecal science in the zoo, but they can also do it out in the wild to monitor the cycles of wild rhinos. Also, when it comes time for us to mix for breeding, we as keepers will swap poo from the male enclosure to the female and the female to the male. This is just so they can get a sense of each other being in the area. And because their eyesight is so, it's not very good. <laughs> They have to rely on like their sense of smell and scent marking. So when you come to the zoo, if you see the rhino spraying urine on any of the areas around its enclosure, this is them marking their territory. So males will use it to mark their territory. Females will spray to let a male know that they are in the area. And then he'll slowly start come closer to that female over the coming days, ready for mating. For us, it's a long process, the breeding. So we're looking at between 15 to 17 months from the successful mating to actually having a healthy calf on the ground. So when calves are born, they're between 35 to 50 kilos. And then for a female to breed again, we're looking at about three to four years. So the calf will stay with its mum for up to four years before moving on. And then she'll go off and slowly her and a male will come together, ready to create the next calf. So rhinos are herbivores, so they'll eat browse, shrubs, other plant materials. So for this, they've adapted to have a prehensile top lip. So it's in like a little hooked shape. This is so they can guide the food into their mouth with this top lip. Whereas white rhinos, for instance, have a larger lip. They're more of a grazing species. So they have more of a chomp rhythm than actually guiding the food into their mouth. Here at the zoo, we weigh our rhinos regularly. So we're looking at weights between 800 to 1,400 kilos for a healthy rhino. Like I said, with the calves being up to 50 kilos. Currently Gabe has a female living next door to him that he's been showing a little bit of interest in the last few days. She's currently in the house, so he's probably wondering where she is.
as you can see on the camera footage, if you look at Gabe's head, as he's walking around, his ears are swiveling backwards and forwards. That's just because he's listening to the sounds that are around him. So with his poor eyesight, he has to rely on his other senses. And also you can see the rhinos are bald all over. <laughs> they only have hair on their tips of their ears and at the base of the tail. So the black rhinos are found in areas such as Kenya, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, and more recently in Rwanda where they've been released. Now that Gabe's coming a bit closer, you'll be able to see that hair on the tips of his ears. And his ears moving around so you can hear what's going on. In the summer when you come to the zoo you might see the rhinos covered in mud so when the weather's nice and warm they will go for a mud wallow this helps to protect their skin from flies <laughs> sometimes if they don't go to the wallow we will assist them in covering them in mud <laughs> in areas where they find hard to reach so mainly around their face on their ears As you can see now, Gabe's got that browse, that top lip. He was using it to feed it into his mouth. We feed the rhinos a variety of different brows here at the zoo. Willow, silver birch, ash seems to be one of their favourites, and hawthorn as well. So hawthorn being really spiky, so when the rhinos are eating that, because the skin's really thick in the mouth, it doesn't really bother them. Whereas when we're dealing with it, it will like prick your fingers. <laughs> Not a very nice brows to work with.
Of course, we're still currently closed here at the zoo. There is lots of ways that you can help support us if you just click on the link in the post. So if you'd like to join us at 12 o'clock for our ringtail lemur talk. And that's it from us and the rhinos.